Did you know that 70% of people trying to build muscle fail to see significant results? And it got me thinking, do these people actually try to take natural supplements? So we're gonna try and find out, do natural supplements actually help you build muscle? And if so, how much? So let's dive into it. So today we're diving into a very popular topic at the minute, among fitness enthusiasts and researchers alike as natural supplements. Because understanding the role of these supplements can be a game changer, whether you're super experienced in the fitness world or you're just starting out and have no idea where to start. Obviously starting the gym and building muscle is no easy feat because you might not be able to find the time, you might hit plateaus really easily and you might struggle to actually pick a supplement to use just because of the sheer amount of them on the market. And you're not alone if you're stuck in what supplements to choose because you don't know which ones work or which ones are just a bit of a gimmick. And these challenges to a stronger, more muscular body can make the whole journey feel a lot more difficult. So let's break it down. We're gonna explore the five most popular natural supplements on the market at the minute and explain the benefits, the dosages, and the potential risks of using them. And then we're going to round off the video by explaining which ones we think you should actually use and which ones you should probably avoid. Right, so the first supplement we're gonna talk about is creatine the most popular on the list. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements in the fitness industry. It enhances the body's ability to produce energy rapidly, increasing muscle mass, power, and strength. And without going into too much detail, it enhances your body's ability to produce energy rapidly due to the ATP-PC cycle, or adenosine triphosphate phosphocreatine cycle. And if you listen to that sentence carefully, you'll hear that I mentioned creatine. That is because creatine, or phosphocreatine, is used within the ATP PC cycle. So supplementing creatine will ultimately benefit that energy system. Creatine also aids in muscle recovery and can improve performance in high intensity exercises like weightlifting and sprinting. So let's go a bit more in depth into how it works because creatine increases the production of adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is essentially the energy currency of cells, which will enhance performance in short bursts high intensity bouts of exercise. So let's talk about the dosages of creatine. So there are two ways of doing a creatine dosage, but the most efficient way is having a loading phase and a maintenance phase. During the loading phase, you take 20 grams of creatine daily, but split it up into four equal dosages throughout the day, because creatine is a slight diuretic. So if you know what that means, you'll know that if you take 20 grams of creatine in one go, you're gonna be on the toilet for a while and you can't help it. So make sure you split that 20 grams up throughout the day into maybe four, five gram dosages. And then you have the maintenance phase, which is where you take three to five grams daily in one serving. That doesn't have to be split up at all. So like all things, especially supplements, there are risks to creatine. And although it's generally considered safe, some people may experience water retention, digestive issues, and muscle cramps. So it's important to stay hydrated when you're using creatine. And if you have any predisposing kidney issues, consult a doctor before you start taking creatine. Right, so the next supplement is up and coming in terms of its popularity, but maybe not necessarily how good it is, and that's Shilajit. If you go back to my very first video on this channel, I do a Shilajit review, um, that's about eight months ago, and ever since then, it's grown in popularity. So Shilajit is an Ayurvedic substance that is believed to enhance muscle recovery and performance. It's rich in folic acid and minerals, which will help your energy levels, reduce fatigue, and support overall vitality. So how does Shilajit work? So like I said, Shilajit is relatively new, so the research on it is quite limited, but it may help the production of ATP and mitochondrial function which can lead to enhanced energy levels and reduce fatigue. So typical dosages range from 300 milligrams to 500 milligrams, but depending on where you buy your Shilajit from means the purity of the Shilajit can vary. So I would recommend reading the packet of what you buy to see what the recommended dosage is for the Shilajit you're buying. So let's talk about the risks. Shilajit is generally safe for most people, but can cause severe allergic reactions in some individuals. So it's very important to use purified Shilajit to avoid contamination of heavy metals. And I think this is quite obvious, but if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you should not be using Shilajit at all. So the next supplement we're gonna talk about has been around for a little while, but again, doesn't have much research on it, and that's lion's mane. So lion's mane is actually a mushroom and is mainly known for its cognitive benefits, such as improved focus and mental clarity. Also, it's been shown to improve overall health by reducing inflammation and promoting nerve growth. And both of these can directly aid in muscle growth and recovery. So lion's mane contains compounds like heresinones and arinocenes, which both help to stimulate nerve growth factor. So this will help to promote brain health and 
potentially improve focus during your workouts. So the standard dosage ranges from 500 to 3000 milligrams, typically split into two dosages throughout the day. So lion's mane is well tolerated with few reported side effects, but some people may experience digestive discomfort or allergic reactions. And obviously those with mushroom allergies should definitely avoid it. If you want to hear a really interesting story about lion's mane and how it's affected this one person in particular, Go to this guy's TikTok channel. He has a very interesting story about how Lion's Mane affected him extremely negatively. Super interesting. It's probably a one in a million story, but again, super interesting to watch. Right, so cracking on with the next supplement, we're gonna talk about CMOS. Now again, CMOS is slowly becoming very popular at the minute, so this is a great one to cover. So CMOS is absolutely packed with vitamins and minerals, so it makes it a very popular choice for people looking to boost their energy and improve muscle recovery. It contains essential nutrients like iodine, calcium, magnesium, and potassium, which all help improve overall health. So how does CMOS work? So there's not much to talk about in terms of how CMOS works, because it's just packed with vitamins that just support overall health. But particularly, CMOS can help support thyroid function, immune health, and just overall fertility, making it a really good supplement for people looking for performance and recovery. Okay, so the recommended dosage for CMOS is one to two tablespoons a day, or one to two capsules per day, depending on what product you have. But again, this is something you need to sort of look at the packet yourself, because CMOS can vary brand to brand. So I would just go based on the packet what the packet says to take. So CMOS is generally safe, but excessive intake of CMOS can lead to iodine toxicity because it's super rich in iodine. So the fifth and final supplement has been around for God knows how long, probably even before I was born, and that is BCAAs or branched chain amino acids. Right, so BCAAs usually contain three amino acids, which are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And these are all super important for muscle protein synthesis. They can actually help reduce muscle soreness after a workout, and can help to reduce muscle breakdown during a workout. So how do BCAAs actually work and why are they so effective? So BCAAs are actually metabolized in the muscle rather than liver. So it's providing your body with a very quick source of energy whilst also improving muscle protein synthesis. So the typical dosages of BCAAs are five to 10 grams a day. That can be taken before or after a workout, but some athletes do actually take BCAAs during a workout as well. But the research to support the benefits of taking BCAAs during a workout is limited or it actually says it's not worth taking. So BCAAs are actually safe for most people, but excessive intake of BCAAs can cause really bad bloating or even diarrhea. So it's really important to balance BCAA intake with your overall protein intake. So here's the kicker. Whilst creatine and BCAAs have very substantial amounts of scientific backing, the effectiveness of lion's mane, sea moss, and Shilajit is more nuanced. Creatine consistently shows improvements for muscle strength and power, and BCAAs can aid in recovery if your protein intake is low. So Shilajit and CMOS have actually very promising potential, but a lot more research is needed to fully understand how they can benefit or negatively impact muscle growth. And Lion's Mane, whilst it's great for cognitive function, it really just supports overall health and doesn't really have much benefit towards muscle growth. And so that highlights a very crucial point. The most effective supplementation strategy really depends on your overall diet, your health, and what your end goals are. So if you're looking just for some overall health benefits, you're probably better off just taking lion's mane, BCAAs, and creatine. But if you want to go all in for the muscle growth route, it's probably worth looking at the other two as well. So to wrap things up, BCAAs and creatine offer very substantial benefits for muscle growth, and Shilajit, Lion's Mane, and CMOS can offer potential health benefits, but like I said, the research just isn't there yet. So I think a key takeaway from this video is that supplements can enhance your muscle growth, but they are not a substitute for a balanced diet and consistent training. So if you've had any experience with these supplements, let me know in the comments, also, if you're not too sure and you have more questions, please again, let me know in the comments and I always reply to these comments because I see them. I'm a small channel, I'm a small creator and I will definitely see your comments. So be sure to leave a question in the comments if you have one and I'll be sure to answer it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and you've not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you get notified every time I post. And for these types of videos, it will be every Saturday at 5 p.m. And if you're interested in my other type of videos, which are Workout Wednesdays, which will show a full workout for a chosen muscle group for that week, it will be every Wednesday at 5 p.m. So you don't want to miss them either. But that's all from me. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.